Okay, so welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today in the lab we have Gigabyte's Z87X UD3H. It's uh, their, you know, obviously it's their Z87 motherboard. We're going to take a look at this is one of their ultra durable five lineups. You got your ultra cool, ultra performance, ultra safe, and of course ultra USB 3 plus. We'll get into what exactly that means once we dive into the particulars of the board. This is going to be for your Haswell brand chips. Uh, it's going to be Core i7, Core i5, anything that's an 1150 uh, socket. Flip the board around to the back, uh, the box around to the back. We'll take a look at the back of the box. We'll go a little bit more into detail about the marketing here, but pretty much what you have is you have a nice uh, screenshot of the board. You have a, a you know, layout of the ports, some more marketing gimmicks, and you know, of course a name, and just a little bit more marketing information. Of course, you have the QR code that's down here at the bottom. Uh, that's become a feature. You just click on it with your phone and get a little bit more information. You have a little bit of a spec, uh, spec list down here. And that pretty much covers everything on the board itself. We'll go ahead and show you exactly what comes in the box as far as accessories, and then we'll get into the design and features of the board. All right, so let's go over what's inside the box. As always, with every motherboard, you're going to get a manual. Uh, manual is going to be just basic information about the board. It's going to give you the layout, any kind of pinout information that you might need, as well as some specifics about the BIOS and any software that comes with the motherboard. Then you also get an installation guide. This is kind of a new feature, but it gives you yeah, basic information on how to get this board set up in multiple languages. Um, of course, there's also a little sticker. Gigabyte likes to include these. They're kind of nice. Uh, you will have a driver's disk. Uh, typical one, driver's DVD. This is the Intel 8 series utilities and driver's disk. You have a uh, IO shield. It's got a nice uh, padding on the back. You have two uh, bags that have two SATA cables each inside of it. It's kind of common. And then you actually have an SLI bridge. So, uh, you know, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing big, but still not a bad haul for accessories. And it's going to give you most of what you need to get, get uh, this board going. Okay, of course, accessories, goodies, manuals, everything else aside, the biggest thing that you're buying this for is going to be the motherboard. It is a typical ATX layout. Uh, it's common. ATX has been around for many, many years. Uh, you know, going back to the 1990s, we started seeing the first ATX motherboards come out around the time the original slot A Athlon, slot 1 Pentiums came out. Uh, ATX has been here for a while. It's going to be here for a while, so we don't plan on seeing it go away anytime soon. But let's go ahead and dive into some of the specifics. One of the things we do like um, that Gigabyte's done in the past is they have this little buffer that's going to keep some of these things from shifting around, especially your I.O. panel. Uh, keeps limits the possibility of damage in shipping. Um, so just take that out of the way. It's a nice touch on the part of Gigabyte. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll uh, zoom in here a little bit. We're going to take a look at the upper half of the board. The upper half of the board is where the CPU, memory, all of that resides. And we'll go ahead and start our walkout in the typical place. Over here, you get your 24-pin uh, ATX connector. You have a USB 3.0 connector. You have a dual LED readout right next to a 3-pin fan header. Of course, you can see some of the solid capacitors and the ferrite chokes that are here, along with some of the voltage regulators for uh, the memory. You do have a solid push-button power button that's right there. It's kind of nice. You also have a bunch of voltage read points. These are uh, pretty cool. They let you actually read the, the true voltage that's going through here when you get this up and running. So if you're doing a lot of overclocking or something like that, you're going to be able to take voltage reads directly off of the board. And you can see those right along here. You also have a couple of switches right here. This is for your dual BIOS. Uh, one switch changes it from single to dual. Um, and the other one tells you which BIOS you're running off of, either the main BIOS or the backup BIOS. You can switch that back and forth. Um, you know, if you're doing a lot of overclocking or you're making a lot of heavy changes, we'd recommend you use the dual BIOS setting. And then you can just flip flop back and forth. Your, back, your backup BIOS is going to be a stock configuration to let you get right back into the system if you should have any issues. Then you can make any corrections you need to. Um, and of course, you can wipe the back, backup BIOS. Now, another thing you have here is you have a reset button and you also have a clear CMOS button. These two buttons right here on the edge. Uh, these are going to allow you, the blue button is your reset and the black button is your clear CMOS. When you hold that down, it's going to clear the CMOS and get you back to a basic configuration. So we'll go ahead and continue our move around. You see that there are two four-pin fan headers. <coughs> One is for the, uh, you know, they're both for CPU, but it's a regular CPU fan and a CPU optional fan. They're going to be right here. They're back to back. That's kind of nice if you want to do any kind of advanced cooling where you have two fans or even if you want to get into the, some of the uh, more advanced uh, self-contained water cooling kits. You can see the heat sink that they put on here, which is kind of nice. It's a different, um, sort of a different shape. 
but it looks like it would be pretty efficient. It's fairly solid. It does have enough of a separation that you should allow air to flow through this and also keep everything cool that's under here. You're going to have uh, some additional chokes, voltage regulation, and this is going to be the voltage uh, primarily controls your CPU and these two banks here. It's also, uh, you know, you want to keep this cool because you want to keep your board running correctly. Again, you have your awkwardly placed 8-pin uh, auxiliary power connector. And this is not a gigabyte thing. This is every single manufacturer of every single ATX board out there. Um, I've seen some attempts to move it around, put a little bit uh, better place, or even extend it up. Guys, just point blank, buy an extender. Uh, you're going to be happy if you do that. All right, moving around uh, to the lower half of the board. Let's take a look here. We'll go ahead and have to zoom back out a little bit. All right, and you can see that we have our PCIe slots. You have three PCIe X16 mechanical slots. It's going to be slots one, um, well actually technically slot, slot two, slot four, and uh, slot five as far as PCIe go. You do have a PCI uh, 2.1 slot. You have three PCIe uh, X1 slots. And with these slots, of course, you know, as we've mentioned before, you really never get full X16 electrical across all of these unless you're dealing with a very, very high-end board. In this case, we'll go ahead and flip it over and show you what Gigabyte has in store for you. Um, as you can see, your primary slot is X16, the next one down is going to be X8, and then the final one is actually only going to be X4. So these are going to be your two uh, SLI ports. So when you do that, everything's going to basically drop down to X8 across the two, so you'll have X8 SLI. And then this slot here, even though it's X16 electrical, you could put another card in there, maybe for physics or something like that, but you're not going to get full X16 across these slots. You can see your X1 slots, and then of course your PCI uh, 2.1 slot. Let's go ahead and flip the board back over and continue our walk around here. Again, you'll notice that Gigabyte has made a nice move here. Uh, they've gone with the black matte PC, uh, PCB, and also all of their caps have gone to black cap, uh, capacitors, these solid caps. It's kind of a nice touch. It makes it a cleaner look. Um, you know, for those of you that might want to display this board inside of your case, uh, most cases are coming with windows now, so that's a, it's kind of a nice uh, option that they put in here. All right, looking at the bottom edge of the board here, you've got your front audio, you have a SPDIF out, you have another fan, a four pin fan header, uh, your trusted platform module, this is a COM port, uh, more USB, front USB, these are USB 2.0 headers, so there's three of them along here. You have another front USB 3.0 header, which is a nice touch. A lot of uh, places you'll get one up by the power connector, but to have a second one down here is pretty cool. You can actually put that in a, another front panel one if your uh, case supports it, or if you want to buy a breakout box with it. Of course, you have your uh, your front panel header pin out. This is for your power button, your speaker, your HDD lights, anything like that. That's all going to be here. Moving around a little bit more, you'll see that we have another system fan uh, header. This is going to be a four pin fan header as well. And then we'll take a look at our uh, SATA 3 ports. All of these are SATA 3. They're going to be in different blocks though. You have SATA 3 on 1 and 2. Then you have this grouping here, which is also SATA 3. And then of course you have the final SATA 3 over here. And the way these break down is actually these groupings here, these are all from the Z87 chipset. Although for whatever reason on the board, if we can rotate this up here, you'll see that Gigabyte has chosen to actually break them out to make them look like they appear different. But these are all Z87, all the black ones come from the same thing, they are uh, SATA 3. And then this right here is from a Marvell chip that's on the board that's going to control this. It's going to be a separate one, it'll also control some of the other uh, options that we'll show you in the back. An interesting thing here. Uh, right here on the edge of the board, as you can see, is a, uh, a SATA power connector. So that SATA power connector is going to come in, it's going to provide extra 5 volt power to the board. And that's kind of a, an interesting option. Uh, we've seen uh, in a lot of places where they'll throw in an extra Molex connect connector or even the old 4 pin style floppy uh, connector. But in this case, Gigabyte actually went with a, a SATA power connector, mostly because a lot of power supplies are only coming with SATA power connectors and not coming with the older Molex connectors or the, those extra floppy connectors. And the ones that you do have, you kind of end up using. All right, so let's flip around to the I.O. shield here. This is your I.O. panel. It's going to be a typical Z87 I.O. panel. You get a PS2 uh, multi-port, a couple of USB 3.0 ports, different options for video. You have standard VGA out, DVI, uh, display port, HDMI. You have an optical audio out some more USB 3.0 ports, two um, eSATA ports, you of course have a network option, um, it's going to be Realtek, and then of course you have your eight uh, ports for your eight port uh, 
audio, you know, it's going to be HD audio. It's going to be, uh, again, probably Realtek. It's a Realtek chipset on there, and it's, uh, you know, it's going to be mostly CPU driven, so a lot of the functions are going to be done in software. Overhead is going to be minimal on that. You might take a hit on real audio quality or some of the power that's coming out of your speakers, but it it's, falls inside that. Um, what we like to call good enough audio. So it's going to be good enough for most things. If you're looking for the, anything more uh, serious, you're going to want to push something up. Uh, same thing with the, the video. The uh, HD4600 on the Core i7-4770K is nice. It's probably the best uh, Intel video card we've seen, but it doesn't exactly give you uh, stellar performance. So if you're looking for something better or something to push games a little bit harder, you're definitely going to want to look at another option. So that covers the board. Uh, pretty well. If uh, We're going to go ahead and uh, take this, put it up on our bench, get everything set up, drop in some memory, CPU, and everything like that, and tell you exactly how it performs. As always, if you like this video, be sure to click on the like button, and make sure you share it with your friends, and be sure to subscribe to us so you can stay up to date with the latest news and reviews we have for you. And be sure to click on the link right below this video, right down here at the bottom. Um, that's going to take you to the written review so you can get a little bit more detail and, uh, and some more information. Thank you.